What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counterpunch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn believes it's a very bad idea for Fury to spar with Anthony Joshua. Fury accepted AJ's offer to help him ahead of the rematch with Deontay Wilder, and Warren, Hearn has warned fight Fury about the risk of reopening his cut from the last fight. Now, Hearn also had this to say about Joshua. He says, I wouldn't be surprised if Anthony Joshua went out there to spar with uh, Tyson Fury. It's a bit weird because he might fight the winner. Joshua is his own boss. If he fancies it, he will go. It doesn't matter what me or Rob McCracken says. He's his own entity and he calls the shots. Now, me counterpunching this situation, I feel that um, it's a good and bad idea. All it really does is reintroduce the habits they have today, okay? They learn about each other, you know, fighters have habits, you know, habit forming things, what you do if you have a little twitch, you know, if you drop your right hand by throwing your left hook. You know, things like that. Those are habits. All fighters have them. If all fighters didn't have habits, they would be robots and cyborgs and the sport of boxing would be boring for the most part. But a lot of boxers, pure boxers, are very, um, very technical and, and technically skilled. So they don't have as many habits, but everyone has them. OK, um, now, as far as the cut. Well. The cut could be made by any other fighter. He could get in there and get injured next week. I hope that doesn't happen, but that can happen. You know, because you're taking full contact. I mean, well, not full contact, but you're taking contact and you're taking blows to the face. You just make sure he has a, you know, a good head guard that protects that particular part. But it could be always reopened. You know, it looks good. It looks like it's healed properly since that time. But those were major cuts. OK, so, you know, it, that, it doesn't matter if it's Joshua or or um, whoever's in there, you know, that could happen anyway. So reopening the cut. Yeah, that's just part of the game. People get injured. People get cut. Things get postponed. Those things, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I just look at those guys sparring, sparring again is just a. It's just kind of like a it's getting your toes wet it's getting your feet wet those guys are just getting reintroduced to each other all again and if they already sparred before that's why i don't you know think that it was a big deal you know it's just a bigger deal now because now you have joshua's the champion and tyson fury you know claiming to be the lineal champion and these guys are much longer in their career than they are and it's time for these guys and they've mentioned fighting each other for a long time so them getting in the ring together is a big deal. It is. You know, when Golovkin got in there with Canelo the first time, it really wasn't a big deal. Okay. When Fury got in there with Anthony Joshua for the first time, it wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't like a big, huge buzz, but it did happen. And what made it more plausible is because Tyson Fury came out of his own mouth and said, no, this guy beat me up. This guy almost knocked me out. Okay. So... That really surfaced buzz around Anthony Joshua. Now, Anthony Joshua has went through his career and got to, to where he's at. Tyson Fury, still undefeated, got to where he's at. And if these guys come together and spar, you know, it would be in someone's best interest to, to uh, record those sessions. I know a lot of people don't. What goes on in sparring stays in sparring. A lot of sparring is confidential. And I know that more than likely somebody won't get the footage and if they do, they would know who it was that leaked the footage. So I think that still saying all this, I think it's a good deal. I think it's a good deal, you know, because Tyson Fury will learn what he needs to learn about to Anthony Joshua, unless Anthony Joshua comes in with a different agenda. You know, um, it is sparring and we have to think about sparring. You're not going in there to fight Anthony Joshua just to see what Anthony Joshua has. You know, you can think that way. But then here's the thing. It's the, spar, the, the, the sparring partner's responsibility to emulate the best of their ability 
the next fight. And if, if, if it was something else, it, it wouldn't even make sense. Because if they go in there, Joshua's fighting like Joshua would normally fight, okay, that really makes no sense. Sure, you'll see signs of what Anthony Joshua would do. However, he's supposed to go in there, you know, and be like Wilder. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, he, those are his uh, emulations. Every so often, you'll go to the body, you know, or throw a, a winging left hook like he's throwing it from back here. You know, those type of uh, emulations he needs for uh, Tyson Fury. You know, I know he's like an inch shorter, but that shouldn't matter. So I still think it's a good idea. And I think it, I hope it happens. Because those guys, they'll get familiar with each other. And another thing that I want to add, it's they have a pretty cordial relationship now. But if they go and spar together... You know, and they get that camaraderie, it'll be easy. I don't want I don't want the Tyson Fury, Joseph Parker type because, you know, he'll never fight Joseph Parker because he calls Joseph Parker a brother. I don't want him that close, but I do want him close enough to get down and, and see men out of deal. And in, Eddie Hearn himself has already mentioned 50-50, so it's kind of hard to go back out down, but go back on that unless Fury loses to Deontay Wilder, and that would be a different situation, right? But anyway... Those are my thoughts. You guys tell me what you think about Eddie Hearn's uh, comments. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been counterpunched. Peace.